Ow! Oh, those live samurai blades. Gary Lee here with Black Belt TV's Martial Arts Exclusive. We're in Anaheim, California, at the beautiful Anaheim Hilton, celebrating the Masters Hall of Fame. And one of my favorite samurais in the whole world, Master Dana Abbott. Sheehan, Dana Abbott. Dana, thanks for coming here, man. Hey, You're, thanks for having me. You didn't me. tell me this blade was live, bro. I mean, get it. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. I guess. We only use live blades. There I mean, it is. Well, Danny, yeah, there's yeah, so much. Yeah, yeah. Can we do it one more time? Okay. One more time. Talk, okay. talk a little louder. I'm doing it just as loud as a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. What I say? Action. Ow! <laughs> you didn't tell me it was a live blade. Gary Lee here with Black Belt TV's Martial Arts Exclusive. We're in Anaheim, California at the beautiful Anaheim Hilton, celebrating the Masters Hall of Fame. And none do I run into one of my dearest friends, a real samurai, Grandmaster Sheehan, Dana Abbott. Danny, you didn't tell me his blade was alive when you gave it to me, man. I lied. I know, but I should have known you always carry a live blade with you. Danny, it's so good to see you, bro. Hey, it's very good to see you, too. Yeah, good to see you. What's going on with Danny Abbott besides traveling, doing seminars, and doing all the stuff you do? I'm spending about 40 weekends a year on the road making sure all the school owners and, of course, martial artists understand the brevity of weaponry and how the sword really works. Well, you're one of the true masters of the of the sword. Now, today we're celebrating the Masters Hall of Fame. Now, are you being inducted or are you just doing a demo? What was going on with you? I'm doing a demo, but I, I'm also being inducted over here on the Congratulations. West Coast. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Now, you're also originally a Black Belt Hall of Fame member also. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 2004. Absolutely. And also now you have also a contract with uh, Century, my friend Mike Dillard and those guys. Yes, yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, uh, I have a product line called Action Flex. It's made through Samurai Sports, and we make full contact weaponry for martial arts. Now, there's police. a name for that. It's called... Uh, well, Chambada. Chambada, yeah. that's right. That's the Japanese version for swashbuckling. Okay. And, of course, we got that out into the mainstream martial arts here, so most every child or adult could practice the sword without the pain or injury associated with it. Now, they wear headgear in yeah. the of course, of okay. course, but not like a, like the UC in Kendo, for example. The armor is a little bit lighter because the swords are a little bit lighter. Yeah, is it full contact? It's full contact, hard wow. as you can go. Wow. Yes. It's made for children and adults. It's made for adults, but children started taking it over, like in all martial art areas. Wow. Now, one of the most famous scenes I remember seeing was you dropping an orange. Yes. Slicing the orange and putting it back into your seat before it fell to the ground. Yes. What an amazing It's It's pretty simple. It really but what is. What do you do to practice that expertise in that? Um, For my viewers. A lot of focus. A lot of chemistry. A lot of focus. A lot of That's focus. what it takes. A lot of practice, a lot of focus. Um, confidence, but it isn't that difficult. It really isn't. Anything that I can do, anybody can do. Well, as my viewers are watching, and, and like I said, you're one of the true 21st century of masters. What would they have to do to, to do a sword? What, how does someone buy a sword, you know, to draw, to, to learn how to do what you do? It's sort of like buying a car. Okay. You know, you don't know what you're going to get until you buy it and you drive it around, and then you find out everybody else is driving the same car. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but moreover, um, it's, if you turn 16, you're not going to buy a brand new car. You're going to buy a used one, play around with it for a while, and then decide what you want when you have, can make that educated decision. So what we basically do is we just have them use wood to begin with. The master start and finish with wood. With a boken. A boken. A bokuto in Bokuto. Japanese. Bokuto. bokuto in Japanese. Us. Yes. Well, i got to ask you a question, not to get away yes. from the sword. Yes. But you have some tremendous war stories. Yes. One of my favorites is the one where you're running in the dark. Now, tell me a little bit about that. Yes. You guys, you train with a special group of... Mercenaries or? Well, they're not called mercenaries, just call them expats that never left the military. Okay. It's, it's, the group is called the Hash House Harriers. Hash House Harriers. Yes, it's all, they're all over the world, chapters all over the world, and it's basically a drinking club with a running problem. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, I remember running with the China Hash, and it's a very dangerous run, but uh, usually you run during the day, or the hardcores run at night. And they run during the day, like there's 300 foot drop offs and mountains and. Well, of course, you're in the jungles, you're in the mountainous jungles in different areas too, and uh, hey, it's very dangerous, but when you run at night, you can't see it, so you run harder. You run harder. Yes. Now, tell me about the leeches. You well, said... you know, there's jungles out there, and there's a lot of different bugs and insects, and if you don't come out of the jungles with, uh, with leeches all over your body, you didn't run hard enough that day. Jeez, what an amazing. Uh, tell me, for my viewers, tell me another war story about your travels, because I know you've, you've traveled all around the world. You're a true warrior. But yes. traveling around the world has got to be exciting. What's been one of your most exciting adventures? 
One of my more exciting adventures would probably be when I was over in India. I really like India a lot. It's just one of those places. You ever wrestled a tiger? Um, a matter of fact, I've touched a tiger's paw before, and he I got I've out of the way. I've wrestled a tiger before, a yeah. white tiger, a sarbash. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, I was in India, and I, I got, dumb, I got, but I got I this close to a tiger. I didn't wrestle him, but I got very, very close to him. Cool. Um, I remember I purchased a couple of camels, and I took two camels through the great Indian desert up in between Pakistan and India for about okay. two months. And I remember at times where, uh, well, I didn't have a glass of water for four or five months. It was always, you know, going down into the, into the wells and bringing up dirty water and boiling it and then putting tea and, and the sugar milk in there and a little bit of wow. sugar. And, uh, Survivor I'm, I'm man. surprised I have teeth left. <laughs> you know, so there's lots of interesting things like that where, you know, being, well, my name is Dana. Us. Therefore, I make it a point to do something a little bit more adventurous. Thing? That's what I've been told. I, I wasn't supposed to say that. I'm That's sorry. okay. okay I, you I'm know, sorry. Ms. Dana, we're not going to draft you. Yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. <laughs> You're certainly not a girl. You're one of the true masters of martial arts. I, 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 I love the fact that what you have done, though, in the past few years. Yes. I, and I've been a big fan of you since we've met. Yes. But what you've done as far as educating children and yes. people of the sword, people are so ignorant of the sword and the katana, the wakasashi, yes. and the family of Tanto's sword. Yes. But when you draw, you're drawing with this particular sword. Tell yes. me about this. This is a wakasashi that was yeah, Actually, this something. isn't a wakizashi as much as it's called a gunto. Gunto. It was a gunto mean gun. It means army. To means the counter of a sword. So army sword it's called. It's basically a wakizashi. Zashi, although it's a little bit longer than a wakizashi as far as the blade and the handle, it's usually is six inches for a wakizashi. This is a little longer, so it allows you to cut with one hand, sometimes two. This was the basic uh, army issue that most non-coms or <coughs> some of the military, uh, Elite Two, used uh, from about about 1900s, but in about 1926 when this was built, uh, it was used when they, uh, you know, all the way up into World War II and the finish of it. Cool. Yes. You know, I, I understand also that, that together, you and I have probably cut more cucumbers and vegetables than anybody else. Actually, I don't cut cucumbers or vegetables. Uh, the only reason why you saw me in a picture with the, with the l orange or lemon that I had was about five, six years ago when I was over at Black Belt Magazine, they were asking me the questions between, okay, what's Iaido? you know, sword drawing, what's Tamashigiri test cutting, what's right. Bato, and all these different questions. So I sh started showing them. Uh, Iaido is basically you draw the sword out, and Bato is like quick draw. Right. And they go, well, well, sort of, what is quick draw all about? That, that remind, you remind me of an old fast gun cowboy who lived in the West. Because you, you do a, a tremendous draw. I mean, so quick and so fast. Do you ever consider yourself like an old? No, no, no. The Japanese took that away, you know, a long time ago. I'm just one of 22 million people that can do the same thing in Japan. You're so humble. Hey, well, you know, it's just the way it is. They wouldn't let me play in the reindeer games if I went in there with my nose high and my mouth big. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me one more thing. What do you feel about being involved with the Masters Hall of Fame? I mean, is it? I feel honored. It's great. Um, I, Dan's done a great job. Hasn't he, he is. He is. He is. And uh, I really enjoy coming over to the West Coast because I do live in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, and that's in the middle of Texas, right? Damn near. Damn near. If you're from <laughs> Texas, it's, in, it's on the outskirts of Texas. I hear you. Yes. Now, tell me about, I just got, we were talking the other night about the uh, uh, handgun. Yes. You said you carry a submachine gun with a suppressor. Well, you can carry an MP5 <laughs> with a suppressor if you have a CCW license over in Arizona. Wow. A matter of fact, if you don't have any licensing Can you at carry all, a sword? Oh, yes. Really? Yes. Same category? Well, remember, I'm a martial artist and I get by with other things that the normal person would. Right. Um, I know that if you carry the sword... Submachine gun sword. Submachine gun sword. Which, which one? Well, let's look at it this way. If a policeman sees a submachine gun, he can, he can deal with that. Right. If he sees a sword, he doesn't know what to think. And that's why, for example, in Los Angeles in the early 1970s, they outlawed nunchucks. Right. Just because they couldn't understand the weapon, but they have an outlawed firearm. And a lot of bank robbers would hit themselves in the head and knock themselves out. Or cops. Could, or cops. Yes. Cool. Yes. Well, Master Abbott, Sheehan, it was such a pleasure talking to you. It was You're one great of my favorite talking to you, people. too. Well, thank you very thank much. thank you for this interview. Thank God bless you. you, brother. Have a great day.